Faculty Center for Teaching and Learning, à la carte. I remember my first couple of semesters teaching history at CUNY. It didn't take me long to realize that my students weren't keeping up with the required reading for the course. I acted fast and did a number of things that helped us through this challenge. Far and away, what I found to be the most impactful change was the incorporation of a short weekly quiz. This quiz, or quizzing, encouraged them to keep up with the reading and strengthened learning in ways in which I couldn't have imagined. What I didn't know then that I do now is that empirical research in the lab and the classroom confirms that quizzes spaced several days after the initial exposure to new material interrupts forgetting and makes the memory traces of the new material more accessible and durable for the learner. As faculty, when we design an optimal quiz, ideally we should harness four mental processes. Those processes are retrieval, generation, elaboration, and consolidation. When educational psychologists refer to retrieval, they are referring to the mental process by which a student is recalling a memory from a prior exposure. In a quiz, retrieval is at its best when we avoid cueing a student too directly. A quiz that requires effortful retrieval, that is, one that challenges students to recall material, concepts, processes that they were exposed to at least three to four days prior without too much cueing is a good principle for quiz design. Along those lines, when we think about generation in quizzing, we are directing students to exert mental energy in not only recalling something from a prior exposure, but also of expressing it in their own words. Think short answer essay or fill in the blank questions rather than purely recognition style quizzes made up of true false or multiple choice questions. When students generate their own rendition of a concept or process, they are embracing it at a deeper level than merely recognizing a correct answer allows. Next, if we can move our students in the direction of elaboration, we ask them to relate to the material in some meaningful way. The best way to foster elaboration is to ask a deep explanatory question about the material. Also, it's worth asking how this topic might matter to the student personally, to his or her community. Or at a fundamental level, you can ask, what is the relevance or importance of X? Another powerful way to have students elaborate upon their understanding is to ask students to find an apt metaphor that gets at additional layers of meaning. Lastly, a quality quiz aids students in the consolidation and reconsolidation of knowledge. We know that if a student can organize his or her new knowledge in an intelligible framework that attaches up to background knowledge as well as related content in the discipline and even beyond the discipline, that the learning won't just evaporate in a few days. It contributes to what I would call durable learning. When instructors give students feedback on their quizzes immediately or promptly, students can reconsolidate their learning, correct for misconceptions or errors, so that their reconsolidated knowledge is solid. They can really build on that. I was taking a neuroanatomy course. My whole class was much better able to conceptualize the material through application questions, through weekly quizzes. At times we even questioned whether we would have passed the course at all had we not had a, a weekly quiz to study for. No matter your discipline, no matter your teaching style, I stand behind the learning science in affirming that the humble, low-stakes quiz is one of our most powerful teaching and learning tools. Gone are the days when instructors might look upon quizzes purely as assessment tools. Knowing what we now know, we should rally around the humble quiz and enshrine it as a learning tool first and foremost. Please come and see us to explore further. We'll help you incorporate a rhythm of quizzing into your course that makes good sense for increased student success.